Hi everybody, um, this is Seed Program here again. We have another um, professional here with us today and she's going to be talking about her career and um, what has led her here since then. I don't know where my video went, but it's recording. So um, we are going to be talking to Natalia Edwards today about um, what her career is and what led her on her journey. And people here in the room so we're going to be interviewing her and asking about that so if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself okay um, so I'm Nathalia Edwards um, I am currently a pharmacy technician um, I am board certified um, and I've been in this career for the past nine years or so about to be nine years okay um, yeah, actually I think it is nine years now okay so it's like it's been a while. Pharmacy Tech anniversary. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you, what am I talking about? Like, you're a pharmacy technician. So, can anybody just do it, or do you have to have some type of licensing, schooling? What is that process? Um, so, I know as of right now, like by the state of Wisconsin, a uh, license or you know certification isn't required um, to be a pharmacy tech. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I think it's moving towards wanting people to be licensed and certified. Um, so I work for Advocate Aurora Healthcare, um, and actually just maybe within the last couple of years, um, they made it a requirement for their technicians to be certified. Okay. Um, so once you are hired on, you do have a certain amount of time to get your certification. Mm -hmm. um, and I know with other pharmacies, like. Walgreens or CVS, um, a lot of different retail places, um, they offer classes or courses um, and they'll pay for them, for their techs to take them if they are hired on and they're not certified already. Okay. Um, so I know that about retail, the retail side, um, as far as I know, Advocate Aurora does not cover courses right now. I think they have a few resources available for them, mm -hmm. just preparing people for the um, certification test. And um, I feel like most directors or you know supervisors, they're willing to work with people and help them get to that point of taking their their board exam. Mm -hmm. So, what's the difference between um, getting your certification versus not? Um, so, I know because I've worked in both retail and hospital settings and the pay can be a little bit different depending on where you're getting you know where you're getting hired or where your job is um, and I know that some places too once you get certified you get a pay increase for that um, I can't say what the standard start rate right now is for a retail pharmacy mm -hmm. um, but or even a hospital pharmacy because I've been you know in in pharmacy for so long um, but you definitely get those increases or bonuses for getting that certification and getting that license. Um, Are your and job it, duties different depending on whether you're not you're certified? No. Oh, okay. Um, so I do know that, I mean, as far as retail versus hospital, the duties are different in mm -hmm. that capacity. Um, but as far as like whether you're certified or not certified, you know, you'll if you're hired in a certain pharmacy, you're going to learn all tasks and duties, you know, based on whatever your availability is and, you know, what you're going to be working, whether it's full-time, part-time okay. um, type of thing. Um, also, I know that there are a lot of, especially in the hospital settings, you can move up quite a bit, like going from just a regular tech um, one or, you know, like just a standard level technician. Um, you can get different titles in the pharmacy. Um, it might change your duties a bit, but basically everyone is doing the same the same jobs. Okay. Um, and there is like leads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that also depends on what pharmacy you're in and what kind of you know environment you're working with. Okay. I have a few more questions about that, but I want yeah. to kind of back up a little bit and ask like, what led you to to this career? Like, what how did you get there and what made you want to do this? Um, so my mom, 
she is a pharmacy technician, and she has been for, I think, like over 20 years now. Um, I was interested in pharmacy back when I was in high school, and I was trying to figure out like what you know what I was going to do for the rest of my life, like all other high school mm -hmm. kids. And um, I actually was thinking about being a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So I did shadow in the pharmacy where my mom worked, and I was able to see like you know the things that they did um, on a day to day. And it just seemed like a very interesting, you know, job to have. Um, and at that time when I was looking into it, my mom had already been in a lot of different departments in the pharmacy, um, as far as in the hospital pharmacy. And so I saw that even though the duties are pretty much, you know, comparable wherever you are, um, you can still do so many different things. Um, so I was like, well, you know, that would give me space to like find what I'm, what, you know, where I'm comfortable. Um, so I took the opportunity. I actually worked for Walgreens, and they asked me, you know, like, what is something that you want to learn? And since I worked there, I was like, well, honestly, like, I would like to work in the pharmacy one day, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they helped me get started with that, and I did end up getting a job there as a pharmacy technician. And shortly after I got that position, I went to Advocate Aurora. Did they pay, if you don't mind my asking, did they Walgreens help pay for that certification or does it cost, I guess? So um, Walgreens does help pay for, or they pay for the course. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how they pick like, you know, when you take the course, how, you know, how long before mm -hmm. you, or I'm sorry, how long after you've been hired, you, you get that course um, started. But they do cover that, as from what I know, you know, hearing from other, you know, colleagues and stuff who either come from Walgreens or that I still know that work for Walgreens. Um, I was supposed to get certified when I worked at Walgreens, but I was there for such a short amount of time that I didn't even get that done. Mm -hmm. So I did, I was a little nervous when I was applying for the position at Advocate Aurora because I had a few months of experience you know I hadn't gotten certified yet so I was like man you know is this going to be something that deters me from getting this position but um, you know they they hired me on and I had an amazing supervisor who she helped us and the, me and the other technicians in the pharmacy make it a goal for us to get certified so I just think you know like having the right supervisors and people there to let you know what's changing you know as far as the law as far as like what the system is going to be requiring like they will do what it takes to prepare you for you know for that test and, and everything so you know as far as like ordering the books that I needed to study um, you know taking the practice exam because there is a practice exam as well um, the only thing with Advocate Aurora is you will pay up front for that exam or for that practice exam. Um, and they will reimburse you, but only if you pass the exam and get the certificate oh. and, and, you know, get a passing grade for it. And then they will reimburse you for the cost of the actual exam. So how much does it cost to do that? Um, I believe it's uh, maybe like a hundred and maybe like 150. Okay. Um, and then once you do get the certification, you do have to um, recertify every two years. Mm, okay. Um, so then after that, that is your responsibility to pay. It doesn't get reimbursed. That's mm -hmm. just to maintain your certification. Okay. Um, so, but I do know as far as the, the actual board exam, they will reimburse for that if you pass. And so, how many classes did you have to take, or how many credits? So, I did not do the route of going to school for it, okay. so I didn't have to take any credits or anything like that. Um, in my opinion, I think it's a good idea to take that route, and I'm only saying that because it gives you exposure to, like, everything pharmacy. Mm, okay. Um, 
and you just have a better understanding just coming right in and you know being hired or starting the job um, you feel a little bit more comfortable at that point just mm -hmm. taking those courses um, you know taking a program at MATC um, getting you prepared for the exam I think it's it's a it's a smart thing to do um, like I said it's not required if you know if that's something that you know you're not you're not a school person mm -hmm. then you know taking the other route is is you know it's up to you right. but you still would need to find a way to prepare for that exam because it is a lot of information <laughs> if you're okay. not working you know like if you haven't worked in a hospital setting there's going to be information on the exam that only hospital technicians would know mm, so you feel like you were better prepared than because you were you worked in the hospital setting because if you would have done your certification through when you're at Walgreens, would you have had the same preparation? Um, so, yes. Okay. Only because when you're taking the course through Walgreens, you know, whatever oh, okay. company Walgreens uses to take these courses, they are teaching you what's going to be on the exam, and that's like just covering everything across the board. Oh, okay. But when I'm studying by myself, I'm like, okay, well, this is what the book has in it, so okay. I can see how I'll read on it a little bit. But, you know, you don't really know exactly what to prepare for you know okay. um and another thing too is the the test the exams change every time mm -hmm. they give it so no one is getting the exact same exam so i just feel like it's better to be taught all of that information from start to finish um from the get-go mm -hmm. instead of having to teach yourself it's just makes it a little bit harder would you have, if you had to do it over again, would you do it that way? I think I would. Okay. I think I would because um, so even still there's stuff that I don't, I don't know. Or mm -hmm. there, you know, there's things that I don't do in the pharmacy because I'm, I'm not trained to do it. Okay. Um, and again, with being in the pharmacy for so long, could I be trained on it? Definitely. Um, but it just may be a little bit, take me a little bit longer than the, uh, the person who did take those courses and is fully prepared um, to learn every position in the pharmacy. It, is there people that are, that have gone the school route that, or is there, I, I should ask this, is there a difference in pay? Like is somebody who has gone through the, the school route versus someone who maybe just went and got certified, is there a different difference in pay? That I don't know. Okay. For sure. <laughs> Um, I have to ask some of your coworkers. Yeah, <laughs> um, but two, it's it's crazy because not many of us have gone the route going to school. Oh, okay. Um, and I think it's just because you know we're, we're taking advantage of the fact that it's not a requirement. Yeah. Um, but a lot of states, in a lot of states, it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you know they change that. You know, sometime in the future, especially with these organiza organizations making it a requirement for people to at least get their certification, whether they've, you know, taken the courses required or not. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that for me, starting at Walgreens and doing retail pharmacy as a pharmacy technician and then going to a hospital um, or an inpatient pharmacy was a big pay difference for me, mm. um, but again, you're doing so you're doing so many different you know doing different jobs. Yeah, really. Um, as far as also getting like yearly merit increases and you know all mm -hmm. of that, any bonuses that may come along, um, it it all depends on. Right. Because there are people who I know who work at Walgreens who make like eighteen, twenty dollars an hour mm -hmm. and you can also make that in the in the hospital. Right. Um, it depends on how long you've been with the company, it depends on, you know, how good of a technician you are. Um, there's just a lot of things that go into it that mm -hmm. you know, you may not start as something that you really necessarily like is your goal to make hourly, um, but 
but it's all up to you on like getting those increases and like making sure you're getting to a good point and um, getting the certification I think would probably help you mm -hmm. especially if you're making that a goal of yours and you know your directors or supervisors are seeing like okay they're making the steps they're trying to get you know to this point or you know they're they want to get to a point where they're trained in all these different areas whereas this person over here hasn't made the steps, hasn't taken the test yet, hasn't even scheduled the test mm -hmm. yet, you know? All right. those things they're they're going to pay attention to and they're going to want to see, right? Um, you know, just the effort. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah. Um, um, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, I had a question about, so, I mean, I go to, like, Walgreens and get my prescription or go to the doctor's office or whatever, mm -hmm. the hospital. What is your day to day? Because I don't know what's happening behind the desk. Yeah, so um, I can give you both both sides. <laughs> okay. Pharmacists, you see technicians, you don't know who's who, you know, you're you're just picking up your prescription. Right. Um so the pharmacists in retail settings, they are not really the ones actually filling your prescription. They might not even be the ones re you know, greeting you at the register. Mm -hmm. Um their job is simply to or not even simply, but their job is to make sure the technician is doing their job correctly, filling the medication correctly, um, inputting the prescription that your doctor sent over or that you dropped off at the pharmacy the right way, that it's um, not going to interfere with any other medications that you're taking, you know, that the directions are clear for you to understand, you know. So that's their, you know, in short, that is what the pharmacist is doing. The technicians are the ones who take your prescription, say you're dropping off a paper prescription at the, at the counter, they'll take your prescription, they're entering it into the computer system, they're billing it to your insurance, they're making sure the medication is, you know, even in stock in the pharmacy that we have enough of it to fill your prescription with you know if it's something we need to order in for you because we don't keep it on a normal basis um, you know they're dealing with the insurance companies as far as like medications that they may not want to cover because that's another part that people don't really understand it's not like a matter of just putting pills in a bottle like there's all these other things that go with it and along with it. Um, and you know, they're counting your tablets and putting them in your, you know, in the bottle and giving it to the pharmacist to to check everything. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of little things that the techs do. Um, and it can be a lot to do all day. And it gets to be stressful and it gets to be, you know, not every prescription is just going to be done in five minutes or 15 minutes, you know. There's a process to it. And um, one thing that I've learned in being a tech is learning how to communicate with people mm -hmm. and letting them know what's going on, you know, in the best way that you can. You know, not everything that a tech is going to say or even a pharmacist is going to say to the average person, they're going to actually understand. Um, so trying to put it into words that like, okay, your prescription isn't filled yet because we don't have this in stock. We have to order this. Or we don't have enough in stock. We have to order more. Or your insurance is wondering why you're being prescribed this medication, you know, what it's being used for, you know, 
if you're going to be at it long term, if, you know, all types of things. So that is like the retail side of it, is your prescriptions that you need, you leave a doctor's appointment, your doctor wants you to get something to start right away or something that you're going to be taking long term, you're taking that to a retail pharmacy and they're filling that for you, however long it takes or, you know, whatever. Um, the hospital pharmacy is like a whole different ball game. Um, they are the ones supplying all the medications to all of the patients that are in a hospital, admitted to a hospital, whether they're there to have a baby, they're there to get surgery, they're there you know, for recovery, whatever it is. The, far the inpatient pharmacy in the hospital is supplying medications to those patients. Um, so there's a lot of different things that they do in the pharmacy as well. Um, like they make IVs for, for patients. Um, so they're, they're compounding meds, they're mixing things together. They're, you know, it's like way more than what people think, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. think it is. Um, so that's where those courses come, mm -hmm. come into play. And mm -hmm. that's where, you know, getting certified is really important because you know exactly what you're doing, right. you know, and it's about, making sure you're you're mixing things the right way for patients so that they're not getting the incorrect amount of medication um you know or they're getting the right medication so um there is you know the techs who prepare the ivs they're in an actual sterilized room they're garbed up from head to toe with you know gowns and gloves and all of that so, do, you, do you do that? I don't do any of that. Okay. Um, so I'm only part-time right now. And um, normally they'll have, unless someone's been like with the pharmacy for a long time mm -hmm. and they were trained IV, they might have went down to part-time and they can still like fill in on weekends or, you know, those odd off days. Um, they'll have that certification. You do have to like re, I think, like test for that. Okay. Um, on a regular basis just because procedures change all the time mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that you know those techs are doing the, the procedures the right way um, so it's easier with full-time techs because they're always there mm -hmm. um, but no I'm not I'm not IV trained um, I myself in the pharmacy I will take any medications that need to be delivered to the different floors in the hospital where patients are admitted to um, and stock the medication dispensing machines. So these are machines that like have a crazy amount of meds in them, um, you know, so that the nurses are avail are able to just go to the machine, take out what they need mm -hmm. and, you know, give it to the patients. Um, we will deliver medications to um, some of the clinics that are connected to the hospital if patients are on um, like different things that are just needed to be given in a clinic outpatient setting, um, then you know we'll deliver those type of things. Um, we just basically give any any and every medication that a patient needs to take. We're packaging or delivering mm -hmm. or making. Okay on a daily um, so there's a lot of different things that go with that just throughout the day um, you know we're supplying medications to the babies in the NICU um, you know the premature babies um, you know where we have to draw up the oral meds or you know supplements or whatever it is that they need um, and we supply the medications to the mothers the epidurals that moms get you know, mm -hmm. when they're in labor and, you know, they want, don't want to be in any pain, we're making those. Yeah. Um, you know, so all, it's crazy that, you know, people don't even, don't think about that either. They're like, where, where, what am I getting and who's giving it to me and yeah. where do they come I mean, from? And, I can see that across cross my mind. It's just yeah. more of like, you know, mm -hmm. okay, I got what I need. I'm not thinking about the, all the behind the right, scenes yeah. things. Yeah. Wow. And, um, 
you know, we're in constant, you know, communication with doctors, nurses, um, you know, pretty much a lot of, you know, different departments in the hospital where we are the ones who are supplying the COVID vaccines to the clinics, oh, yeah. you know, so we're maintaining the doses of that. We're making mm-hmm. sure we have enough in stock for that. Um, you know, there's, there's a person in the pharmacy who does all the ordering of all the medications, so they keep track of our inventory. Um, there's so many, so many aspects that go into it. Yeah. What? And that's what, that's one of the questions I have too, is just like, I like to ask people this, like just in general, yeah. is like, what about your job, like post COVID, among COVID, you know, during COVID has changed and for the better? Okay. Um, I think that we have become so much more aware of safety Mm-hmm. And just like keeping ourselves safe, keeping the patient safe, you mm-hmm. know, keeping everyone in the hospital, other departments, we're more cognizant of each other. Yeah. And um, with COVID happening, there's been so many people leaving the organization. There's shortages of nurses, there's shortages of techs right now. Mm-hmm. And I think we're just so much more appreciative of each other and you know trying to make sure that we're doing the best work that we can even though we may be overwhelmed you know we may be stressing because it's just so busy right now Mm -hmm. for everyone but trying to make sure that we are not forgetting that we're all there to take care of the patients right um i think it too just gives a better understanding of what's going on in the world too and how we just need to do better for each other. Yeah. And, you know, think of, not just think about ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's why I like to ask that because, like, I think across the board, no matter what field you're in, whether it's a helping field or business, everybody has gone through a change. Yeah. And I think if we can try to find some of the positives in this, mm-hmm. it just kind of helps you look at things a little bit differently as yeah. opposed to, like, oh, now we have to do this. Yeah. But I think if you can look at things differently, like, wow, we should have had that policy change or this process in place the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, this, this seems yeah. more efficient. Yeah. And so it's good to hear that there's there are also things in the healthcare side of things that have, oh, that yeah. have changed for the for the better. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I think um, you know, although it's been like a really really difficult last almost two years, right? Yeah, yeah. a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, we're I think moving to a better place, mm-hmm. just as far as us knowing that we're doing what we need to do, right? Um, and I'm fortunate to like be in a department in the hospital that is constantly communicating with us, mm-hmm. always letting us know what's going on, always letting us know what changes are happening, um, and just being understanding of how, even outside of work, the that COVID is affecting everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, I feel like people think that. The employers don't always care about what's going on outside of work. Right. Um, but I feel like if, if you're communicating the right way and you're letting everybody know, um, like we're all, you know, we're all in this together. Like mm-hmm. yeah. We're all trying to get through it together. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, kind of have, before we, before we come to an end here, um, I have inside information mm-hmm. that, that that tells me that you are looking to go into another career right now. Yes. And um, normally, I would ask at this time, like, what 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 leaves you here? What what makes you stay in this field? But um, you know, I know that you really enjoy working with people, and um, which has kind of led you to pursuing um, another career choice. If you want to just kind of briefly talk about that path for you, what that's yeah. going to look like. Um, so. I have decided to, while I'm still pursuing my education, um, stay in the pharmacy um, because I do enjoy it like that much. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned though, um, just working in a lot of different 
environments in pharmacy that I am drawn to a certain type of help mm -hmm. than others. Mm -hmm. um, so when I left Walgreens, I was working at Aurora Psychiatric Hospital, which is, you know, a behavioral mm -hmm. health hospital. And that is where I really started to think about, like, what it, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Like, what do I want to do? What am I interested in? Um, and working there, I just became very, very immersed in, like, mental health, substance abuse, um, and helping those patients. And really working in the pharmacy was an eye-opener for me in that specific pharmacy because what I've learned is there's the stigma when it comes to mental health patients and substance abuse patients in the pharmacy world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not something that I, I, I don't like, mm -hmm. you know, how, how that is. Um, I was able to see how much help they needed and just like any other person who is going to a pharmacy and picking up a blood pressure medication, mm -hmm. you know, they want to know what they're taking this for. They want to know what it's going to do to them, how it's going to affect them. Right. You know, some of them may be, you know, hesitant to even take it. Mm -hmm. Like, just because patients who are suffering from mental health or substance abuse are taking different kinds of medications mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they don't have those same feelings. Right. Um, it doesn't mean that they're always trying to take advantage or get over on, you know, on the system or the pharmacy or whatever. So it made me want to know everything I could about pharmacy and also know everything I could about these patients that I was working with because mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to let them know like, okay, these are medications that you need to be taking, you know, mm -hmm. for this, 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 and this reason, you know, um, if there are any issues with your insurance, with your doctor, with whatever, we're here to make sure that you get this, right? you know, the best way that we can. And to make sure that you are able to continue with the treatment that you you know that you need to get, mm -hmm. and understanding the pharmacy part of that was a big thing because mm -hmm. you know we worked with patients who were you know admitted to the inpatient hospital for whatever reason, discharged, started on all these new meds, and they're like, I, you know, I don't know you know what what this is. I don't know why they're trying to give it to me. You know, I'm sober now. I don't want to be on medication. You know, just yeah. those type of mentalities and trying to help them understand that that's your choice. And, you know, you're going to go about your treatment the way that you want to. Mm -hmm. But these are professionals that want to help you. These are professionals that want to make sure that, you know, you stay on this straight and narrow path or that you get to just a better place with yourself right and it was important for me to know that because I didn't want to be treating these people a certain type of way because of how I knew or how difficult they can be sometimes yeah in other settings mm -hmm. you know and they would always be so appreciative when I would take the time to talk to them mm -hmm. or just hear them out or explain what was happening with their medications right um you know they always were just so appreciative of that mm -hmm. and sometimes I would sit there and talk to people or they would talk to me on the phone for like forever and, I, and I'm like <laughs> okay, I can't stay on the phone you know so I, I just felt like I'm like I, I clearly feel like I'm a person that people feel like they can talk to right and I want to help them you know mm -hmm. and so I I, I I realized that I'm like you know like I I love working with these patients mm -hmm. even though I might get that one odd you know one that's just like really difficult and isn't taking you know or receiving my help the way that I want them to 
I had more people who would enjoy coming to the pharmacy mm-hmm. and would enjoy talking to me or would only call and speak to me because they're like, she knows what she's talking about. Right. Type mm-hmm. of thing. And it just opened my eyes to, um, you know, to a different world, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized just how much, how much they get, it's like almost they get forgotten about. Mm-hmm. Right? People just don't realize that it's like, it's not just, like, they have all these underlying things that are going on that right. they're dealing with, and they need your help. Right. And it takes people like you, right, that, that have the passion for that. And, yeah. And the knowledge you have, I think that's such a great piece to bring to work in the human services field is having yeah. that, that pharmacy knowledge. Yeah. I mean, I never, like, really put two and two together. I mean, mm-hmm. unless, you know, you're, you know, want to go on to be, you know, a... Uh, um, psychiatrist, writer, psychologist, a doctor, um, working in the mental health field, it doesn't seem like, oh, that may not be necessary, but I can see how that would be a necessary piece of information yeah. to bring into the field. Yeah. So. And sometimes, you know, even working in that pharmacy and working with the psychiatrist and, you know, the nurses and the doctor, they didn't even understand a lot of it either, mm-hmm. you know. They're prescribing these meds that, like, you know, it's a new medication, doesn't have, you know, a generic, so it's crazy expensive. Insurances aren't covering it yet. Like, you know, we were very open and honest with our doctors, and we informed them of a lot. So, luckily, in our hospital, majority of the doctors would, you know, call us first. They'd be like, okay. Before I discharge this person, I need to know, like, how much is this medication? Yeah. They can start you on anything while you're in the hospital. You're not getting charged right right away for that medication, you know? So they can start you on something in there, and then it has to be changed when you get out. Yeah. And you might not do well on that one, mm-hmm. you know? But it's all, there's so many different, like, things that go into it that... Mm-hmm. Whether it's at a psychiatric hospital or it's, you know, um, regular primary care Mm -hmm. doctor's office, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, there's so much you can learn, there's so much you can do with it, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And just as a starting point, Mm -hmm. you know, especially for me, I, when I started off, I was like, okay, I could do this, like, I could do this for the rest of my life, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew I didn't want to be a pharmacist. I'm like, I'm not meant to be in school for <laughs> that long and that rigorous of a program. Yeah. You know, but a lot of people, too, they start off at tech, as techs and then they decide they want to be pharmacists. You know, yeah. it's a it's a good starting point to me, um, especially, like, for the age group that you guys serve. Like, just mm-hmm. getting their eyes open to stuff that's out there that people right. don't even realize, like... I didn't get into this until I was like 20, 21 years old, you right. know. Which is why we we do things like this because we want right. to expose to like yeah. such a variety of careers you can get into and yeah. make a living and, people and don't. a lifetime career. You uh-huh. could you could do this for a lifetime. Yeah. And again, like with the shortages of techs right now, they're doing bonuses, sign on bonuses. There, you know, mm-hmm. there are so many positions open. Yeah. And there are different departments that you can be in, mm-hmm. you know, different yeah. areas. You don't necessarily have to be in a pharmacy, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a lot of different um, different things you can do, mm-hmm. in my opinion, and it can open it up for a lot yeah. of other stuff. It seems it has for you. Yeah. I, I do have one final question, mm-hmm. and if you could just say, what do you think has been your biz- biggest success in, in your field, in this, in the pharmacy field? Okay. Um... You may have already kind of touched on some of it, but... I I would say that I have, like, a few. Okay. Just being able to, like, dip my foot in so many different areas. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been really fortunate, again, to, like, work with a lot of good people and good pharmacy teams um, and learn so much from, from the past almost nine years of, you know, working in pharmacy. Um, you know, getting certified on my own. That mm-hmm. was a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, and also just maintaining this career for this long, too. 
you know, is another thing. Um, and then it opening my eyes to something else mm -hmm. and being able to use that to um, to figure out what I want to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. Yeah. So, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm glad I wanted to part time, but I know I'm glad I wanted to part time yeah. when I did. Yeah. Um, and there may have been some little bumps, you know, here and there. Mm -hmm. Work isn't the best every day, but, yeah, you know. It's be um, expected, right? Yeah. But, again, working with good people, having good supervisors, directors, mm -hmm. um, you know, working for good companies that actually value their employees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say I got pretty lucky. Yeah. Well, we did too. We're having you come in here today. Um, we appreciate you coming in yeah. again. It's Natalia Edwards um, on our career path, career pathways um, interviews that we are doing, continue to do um, live from Owen's place. And um, again, we have more coming up um, next week. I think we have a few more. We have a boutique owner. We have an assistant principal coming up, um, and some others in the future. So join us again. Thank <laughs> you.